This is the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome Podcast. I am your host, Laurie Henderson. Join me on this journey into the world of manga, where a river of reviews flow through caverns of commentary down into the latest news. Welcome to the Manga Dome. Please stop asking. Kodansha Comics, formerly Delray Manga, has been trying its hand at social media again. They have started posting to Twitter more often than every other month, and have just started a Tumblr account. It really shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone that questions about old, unfinished Delray titles would come up. Namely, if Kodansha was going to finish them. Even though Kodansha has already said they will not, and even licensed some of the old titles to J Manga before they went under, some fans just can't stop asking, hoping for a different answer. Anime News Network did a short news blurb about this recently, highlighting the Kodansha Tumblr answer, which led to a comment about it on the Kodansha Twitter account. While Kodansha may consider this old news, apparently it isn't to a lot of fans, otherwise they wouldn't have gotten the question in the first place. Sorry, Kodansha. You may not care about these older titles that have moved on, but a lot of fans haven't. We still care, still want to see our favorite titles completed, and we'll continue to hope against hope that someday they will. Manga Review 13th Boy Warning, this review may contain spoilers. I want to apologize beforehand. I will probably butcher a lot of names from the series, but I will do my best. 13th Boy is a fantasy romance comedy series from Yen Press. It is a manhwa, or Korean comic, and is 12 volumes long. It is written by Sang Yuen Lee and is rated for teens 13 and up. Each volume retails for 10.99 US. I reviewed the first volume of this series for my blog and liked it well enough that I decided to check out some more volumes. 13th Boy is about a middle school student, He So, who has had 12 boyfriends over 8 years. Her most recent is Won Jun, who she asks out on a national TV show. After only a month, though, he wants to break up, but he so isn't ready to move on to her 13th boyfriend, so she resolves to win Wang Jun back. Helping her is Beatrice, her walking, talking cactus, while Wang Jun's best friend, Wee Young, may prove to be a hindrance, as in his jerkish way, he seems to care about he so as well. Romance, hijinks, and a touch of magic make this a fun, offbeat series. Hiso, the protagonist of the series, is an odd character to get used to. She is strong-willed and straightforward with her thoughts and feelings, which I tend to like in female leads, but sometimes she's too straightforward. Her desire to be with Wan Jun borders on stalker. Her resolve is admirable, but the way she goes about it isn't. She follows Wan Jun, trying to find ways to inject herself into his life. She joins the Girl Scouts so she can go on a camping trip that the Boy Scouts and Wan Jun will be participating in. She becomes friends with Sae Bom, Wan Jun's childhood friend, just so she can get closer to Wan Jun. Her selfish and conniving ways make her someone you don't want to like, but then she turns around and redeems herself by risking her life to save Sai Bom's stuffed rabbit Toto in a fire. I want to dislike her for a selfish and demanding personality, but she is earnest and honest with her feelings, both good and bad, so it's hard to completely dislike her. The object of her affection, Wan Jun, isn't all that much better. Even though he's good-looking, his personality is cold and distant, and by the end of the first volume, I would have sworn he was a robot. His cold personality really made me question Hiso's judgment in her single-minded pursuit to win him. Even after he agrees to be her boyfriend again, and thinks he has feelings for her, he always has that same bored look on his face. When he jumps in to stop the girls from pounding the unconscious Hiso with balls during a dodgeball game, one of the girls comments they have never seen him angry before. Honestly, I couldn't tell his angry expression from his happy. I really couldn't see him as a love interest for anyone, let alone the highly emotional and expressive Hiso. But Wan Jun's eyes are for Sei Bon, his and Wee Young's childhood friend. Sei Bom has had some struggles growing up, the biggest of which is her parents are separated. When she was younger, she felt very alone and relied heavily on Wan Jun and Wee Young, to the point that, even though she is a teenager, she is mentally still a young girl. She is quiet and timid, always carrying around a stuffed rabbit named Toto, and refers to herself in the third person. Most of the girls in her class find her annoying and like to pick on her. It's a little hard to blame them at first. The speaking of herself in the third person is annoying. But with Hiso's help, 
both as a friend and as an interloper into the Wanjun Seibon and we young circle of friends, she starts to grow up, and that I did like. Seibom, though, seems to have eyes for we young, though it seems to be more dependence on we young and getting her walking, talking Toto back than any real emotion there. No, right from the beginning, I thought we young was more suited to he so. He is always frowning and rarely has a nice thing to say either to or about he so. He is snarky and just as blunt as her. He aggravates her to no end, which makes him the kind of couple I like. He is also always there when he so needs help. Whether the situation is big or small, such as making their feet disappear when some classmates come into the room, or saving her from a fire, he is always there, even when he tells her what an idiot she is. Wee Young can do this because he has inherited a magical power that uses up a little of his life each time he does. This power and his seemingly frivolous use of it has caused his mother to distance herself from him so she won't be hurt when the power finally kills him. But Wee Young can't seem to stop, especially where He So is concerned. The reason for this leads us to Beatrice, He So's magical cactus. It was left on her doorstep one day when she was eight, and it has been her friend and confidant ever since. She tells Beatrice everything about school, her friends, and most of all, her love life. And Beatrice is there to help her, talk her through her troubles, and scold her when she's being silly or lazy. And once every full moon, Beatrice takes on a human form. While He So is trying to win back Wan Jun, it soon becomes obvious to Beatrice that he is also in love with He So. He wants nothing more than to be a normal boy and try for He So's heart. But for He So, whether in cactus form or in human form, he isn't someone she can love that way. When he becomes human seemingly, permanently, He So shuns all her friends, even Wan Jun, to stay with him over the summer. When he runs away, He So runs off into the rain to try and find him. She sees him as her responsibility, and that she has to take care of him, which is the one thing he doesn't want. A big element of Thirteenth Boy's plot is the idea of having a destined love. This is emphasized heavily at the beginning of the series, as he so is positive that Wan Jun is her destined love, which is why she starts out fighting so hard to keep him. But destiny always has other ideas. What starts out as a love triangle grows into a polygon with he so in love with Wan Jun, but he has feelings for Se Bom, who says she loves Wee Young, who might or might not have feelings for he so. Throw in Beatrice and the bouncing of Wan Jun to he so and Se Bom to Wan Jun, and the whole thing goes completely askew. Or so it seems. It turns out the romance is really a circle starting when he so and Wee Young were young and coming back around to them at the end. In typical he so fashion, she's too stubborn to accept the truth and ends up fighting it for several months before Wee Young finally gets through to her and they can finally have their happy ending. And it isn't just them that get a happy ending. We get glimpses of Wan Jun and Se Bom's new lives where Destiny doesn't seem to be finished with them either. Everyone got the happy ending they deserved. I liked Thirteenth Boy. At least it had its moments, but difficult to like characters kept it from being great. I didn't care for he so for most of the time. Her demanding and selfish nature really got on my nerves. Wee Young was a real saving grace of this story. His constant annoying of he so was fun, and his bluntness, especially when she tries to go all girly on him when she decides she likes him, was perfect. The supporting characters really helped, too. Nam Jun is the perfect best friend for he so. She could be just as fiery as he so, both in her chosen sport of judo and her friendship. She didn't approve of Hiso befriending Sebom, and this led to a shonen style game of dodgeball, including called out attacks. Once their differences were settled in a judo match, Nam Jun became just as involved in helping Sebom become independent as Hiso. Hiso's family provided some amusement as well. She has two sisters, one older, He Ju, and one younger, He Ji. He Ju is the not too smart, violent type who likes to beat up on He So. He Ji is the smart and pretty younger sister who gets in trouble with He Jo because she can't take her sister's ignorance. It was funny seeing her fume at her sister use the wrong words and then explode correcting her, which usually got her dragged off by He Ju. I wasn't as enamored by the talking cactus as a lot of people seem to be. It also didn't take me long to figure out what was going on with Beatrice and why he felt the way he did for He So. I did like the whole supernatural angle. It breathed some life into what could have been a tiresome rom-com. Overall, Thirteenth Boy is an enjoyable series, even with the annoying leads. 
If you like some good snark with your romance, this series is a definite must. The supernatural element is always there, but it never feels overwhelming. He so sees to that. All 12 volumes are available in print. For 2 to $4 less per volume, you can get 11 volumes on the Barnes & Noble Nook. I give this series a 4 out of 5 stars. Thank you for listening to the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome podcast. You can find links to the stories and books discussed here in the show notes at manga.jdragononline.com. You can email me with any questions at xanadu at jdragononline.com or leave a comment on this post. Rate me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at mangazanadu, all one word. Until next time, farewell from the Manga Dome.